if you're watching this, then uh, I am letting you in on a very intimate experiment that I'm doing in my life. Um, it's uh, an experiment, something I've never done before, of taking a contemplation that I'm in and allowing the fullness and the openness of my channel to work out and move with and digest the contemplation out loud as I'm sitting with it. And this experiment is rooted in something that is happening inside of me where the more I feel um, like my system is purging the, the paradigm that has constructed the world that we're living in, um, in terms of its systems and structures, its human systems and structures, um, the more of this like toxicity that I expunge from my, from my psyche and from my body, from my emotional body, from my nervous system, the more I realize how profoundly I have been trained to be disembodied, to not live inside the exquisite miracle of this body and to allow this body to be a fundamental dimension of my intelligence, my capacity to perceive the world and interact with the world. Um, and so as I have started creating more harmony and balance between my intellect, my mind, and my um, somatic intelligence, um, I've started sort of cracking all kinds of things open. I'm not gonna go into that now because I think I just wanna get to the experiment, which is um, what you're about to witness. I've never done this before. This is all new for me, um, but it's a, an intimate contemplation that matters deeply to me. And I hope that if you're watching this, that, um, that not only the words that are spoken through the dimension of the vibration of sound, um, but the, the energy from which those words spring and the embodiment of that transmission can, um, can come in. If you can allow and allow your body to be a part of your receiving of this transmission, to allow your breath to pace the transmission and create more space inside to dance with what may be coming through me. <laughs> um, Oh, I can feel some shakiness and nervousness in my body in this moment as I make contact with the new territory that I'm in and the fear of being seen, the fear of being um, judged, the fear of being um, uh, outcast in some way because of how differently I am um, operating and conducting myself now. Um, oh. I recently had this um, encounter with my original innocence, like the innocent genius of my being, what it was like to be a baby before I um, was programmed with all of these beliefs and modeled to by all of these people who had been programmed by those beliefs. Um, I just touched that innocence in me and the magic in me, the magic of that innocence and the, the innate magic of the relationship of that innocent curiosity with the world versus the knowing. And I also got this way that I learned to, when I was caught in my innocence, being in the magical world of my direct experience by the adults, I would, I, there was a shame reflex in me that would um, come out of my magic and perform whatever sort of um, duty or task or program was being expected of me in that moment. And so uh, I've learned to hide my magic. I've learned to hide the essence of my direct experience with life um, because it does not um, align with the programs that I've been trained to operate in. And so this is my intimate exploration of innocence. This is my allowing, this camera at least, I don't know if anybody else will ever see this, but I'm allowing the possibility of being seen 
in the magic of my being and the possibility of expressing the magic of my being without diluting myself in order to make other people comfortable with the wholeness of what I am, that I am. And so, you may or may not also notice these ways that you have hidden your magic, these ways that you have compromised with the paradigm. But this is an invitation to you to connect with your own truth and your own magic. This is not a sermon. <laughs> this is not a, a logical argument that, uh, in which there's a winner of the truth prize. This is a contemplation. This is my experience and my perspective and my perception of the world. And you get to receive that and notice how it rides along with, butts into, pings off of, or kind of impregnates and explodes your own inner experience, your own inner perception, your own stories about life and what's happening. And what I wanna say is, we're all here to run our own experiments. We're all here to get our own data from the beautiful system of empirical research in life, direct experience. So may this be of some support to you in your experiments. And before I go any further, I just want to invoke. <sighs> Five deep breaths. You're welcome to join. with this transmission. I call upon and invoke the presence of my divine Father, heavenly light, clarity, and truth, eternal justice, protectorship, and guidance. Thank you for your presence. I am presence. I call upon and invoke the presence of my divine Mother, Queen of Life form, my physicality, my emotionality, divine compassion, unconditional love. Thank you, Mother. Thank you for guiding this contemplation. Thank you for infusing it with your beauty, your practicality. I call upon and invoke the frequencies of the archangelic realms. The frequency of clarity. The frequency of truth. The frequency of harmony. Thank you. The frequency of forgiveness. The forgiveness arising a causally and moving backwards in this time continuum toward the past, redeeming, opening, cleansing, softening, and healing the past from the present, and healing the present from the future.
right now we are the recipients of a forgiveness that we know not yet how to understand or receive from a future that is ourselves. So I invoke these frequencies in the name of clarity, truth, unconditional love, harmony, grace, prosperity for all, and forgiveness of all debt, forgiveness and completion of all karma, forgiveness and release of all patterns of exchange based on any kind of transactionality. The contemplation that led me to this experiment today is the contemplation of the shadow of the victim and perpetrator, the dance in the shadow. And I find um, myself holding a very different perspective than many people do on this subject and I'd like to share it and how it lives in me in case my own inner contemplation of this has some relevance to your journey of coming to terms with the shadows of victim and perpetrator in your own personal life, in your relational life, in your community life, and in our global Ohana family. The shadow is afoot. It is a self-replicating pattern that is continuing itself continuing to trap the world in this duality, conflict. And so when we start talking about the victim, it brings things up for people. There's a somatic experience. People are not neutral to this term. Almost never is someone simply neutral to the term victim. it stirs something deep inside of us and there's two apparently competing paradigms about how to look at this that are prevalent in my community and I want to share the merits of each of them and also recognize in this transmission this contemplation that they are um, um, each one of two eyes which only by using both can we see the depth of field and locate something where it is in space. And so I want to acknowledge that we live in a world where people are victimized by other people and that there is a perpetration on another person that is a victimization of that person in that moment, in that exchange. This is very real and it is very, very damaging. It creates so much suffering in the world. And I want to breathe with the suffering of this dynamic in the world. Make space in my body to feel the feeling that is there that is intimately connected to every other being, feeling that feeling of victimization, that feeling of the perpetrator being victimized by their own impulses, their own ignorance, to take from another being what is not freely given. This is the essence of transgression, to take from another being what is not freely given. Not given according to a constraint. Not given because I'm afraid of the consequences of not giving. Not given in order to get something. But freely given. Freely given as the authentic expression of one's truth and one's soul. As the steward of their own consent. So the essence of transgression is to take to not honor the sovereignty and the free will of another being 
and to take what is not freely given. And that is the seed of violence that results in all of the other violences, murder, rape, theft, genocide, ecocide. And as I've been awakening to, in my own contemplation to the exquisite refinements of what it means to be a consensual being and what I regard as a thing versus what I regard as a being, and my responsibility when I see a being before me to honor that being's consent. Trans species, for sure. Transdimensional, perhaps. So there's no doubt that this cycle exists and causes tremendous suffering. And that all of us can consider ourselves someone who has been victimized at some point in our lives. essence of the victim mentality is a belief that other people's actions on some core level that other people's actions and what's happening outside of you um, have a greater impact on your experience in life than your own choices and what's happening emerging from within you so the victim is involved with what's happening to them rather than what they are bringing. And this is the victim mentality as opposed to the victim, the experience of victimization. As somebody who has myself, um, I, was, I was victimized as a 15 year old and I was drugged and sexually abused by a family, a close uh, friend of our family. And I was legitimately victimized but I am not a victim. I am a survivor. I am a soul who incarnated on this planet in order to transmute the ancestral inheritance that is perpetuating these patterns of violence, of exploitation. This is my dharma. This is my contract with life. This is my reason for coming here now. I know this. This is not an idea anymore. This is my lived experience. And I don't expect anyone to have the same lived experience. I honor and support you in your experiment wherever you are in life. But I have been deeply involved, as you can imagine, in understanding how to distinguish between having been victimized and walking around in a victim mentality, positioning myself as the victim of my experience. This is a fractal experience, starting with now, expanding out to every layer of our lives. In what ways and to whom do I feel like I am a victim of somebody else's choices, behaviors? And how much energy am I giving to an identification with what has been done to me. Because this gives rise to a sense of powerless. It co-arises with a sense of powerlessness. As a victim of what's happened, there's nothing I can do to make it better. And this is an inherent part of that system and its self-replicating capacity. It gatekeeps our capacity to move beyond the pattern by instilling a sense of powerlessness where we've lost contact with our sovereign truth, with our root, with the sovereignty that lives at the center of our being for those who have claimed it. Because the experiment I'm in is one of radical responsibility for my life radical responsibility for my creation radical responsibility for my feelings radical responsibility for my thoughts and perceptions taking 100 percent uh, accountability for every level of my experience <laughs> because this is the path of sovereignty for me 
It's a path of awakening into the beauty of being at the center of my reality. So I invite you to try this lens on. It's just a lens. It's just a perspective. It's a way of seeing. It's a set of glasses you can try on. What would, what would life look like if I was 100% responsible? my experience. Now, the tricky part is that while responsible for my experience. I also am not a separate thing from any of the other things or beings that exist in my realm. We are utterly interdependent upon one another. We are all hanging against each other, between each other, in a, in a unbroken chain of connectedness throughout the entire cosmos all of history and all of the future. There's an unbroken fabric that unites all of us. None of it exists without all of it. None of us exists without all of us. And so there's this recognition of the polarity between these two perspectives, between the perspective of, of interdependence, care, connection, the feminine, the feminine principle, and sovereignty, choice, free will, freedom, accountability, centeredness, right? The masculine, the divine masculine. And these two polarities, people collapse into one or the other of them all the time. It's either this or it's this. This is the programming. It's nobody's fault. It's nobody to blame. This is just our evolutionary edge. But it's a strong program. It has to be this or this. <laughs> when, at a fractal level, as a principle of reality, we have to understand that it is only in the synthesis of these two perspectives that we can find a more complete truth. Each of them carries truth, but neither of them are complete truth without the other. They rely upon one another for the completeness of their truth, and they're not other than each other in the non-duality. So when I talk about the mentality of the victim, I'm pointing to a program that runs in the human genome, a program, a very strong program, which is rooted in a sense of separation from and a sense of lack. It's rooted in, a, in this illusion that we could ever benefit from taking from somebody else what they are not freely giving to us. It is rooted in the perception that we can actually benefit from taking from someone what they have not freely given to us. And we want to point at the most egregious examples of that and sort of other the people who do that instead of recognizing that we all do that. We've all been trained to do that. We're all part of the pattern replicating itself in some way, somewhere in our lives. Even if we've been on the trail of this shadow for a decade, for two decades, for five decades, nobody is, <laughs> nobody's done yet. As long as it exists in the genome, nobody's done yet. But 
we are learning how to identify this program, this corrupt program. We can see the results of the corrupt program in the systems of the world. We can see the results of this corrupt programming in all of the economies of the world, in this global colonization, in this, in this uh, world of exploitation, and those with taking even more from those who have less to in increase their more than they need, right? Utterly broken paradigm broken at the paradigm level, not at the law level, not at the level of government. It's broken at the level of paradigm, at the level of perception. So we have to uproot it if we are to transcend it. We have to become aware of this programming in myself, in myself here inside of my own, the most intimate layers of my experience. Only when I have generated a field of awareness of my own sovereignty, and that includes a deep and profound reverence for the sovereignty of every other being, no matter how they behave. to be agents of a collective expunging of this corrupt data from the programming. And in order to do that, I think it's important to cultivate this capacity to see from multiple perspectives and not get caught in one perspective and that there's another perspective that's wrong. Where can we see ourselves falling off one or the other side of the razor's edge? And how can we allow these two dimensions of experience to inform a more complete perspective so that our actions can arise from more information about life and what's happening here? So that we can start to reclaim our power from every place that we have projected it out onto a system or projected it out onto my family or projected it out onto a person or projected it out onto my body as though I am a victim of my body. And as we start to recognize that we're making choices and that so many of those choices were run by an unconscious pattern in the past, and that I can now make that pattern conscious, but in order to do so, I have to see the pattern. I have to look at it. I have to see, which I have not let myself do. I have to see the unconscious choices that I made and take responsibility for the impact and the outcomes of those choices. And that does not in any way excuse anyone else's behavior. It does not in any way say it's okay that, that, you have, that you have transgressed my sovereign realm. No, 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 no. It simply takes accountability for my part, for my part, because it's my choices. It's my actions, it's my words, it's my thoughts, it's my relationship to my body, it's the way I show up in my relationships, what I bring to my relationships, which defines the foundation of my experience in my life. It is these which define my life. And of course I am impacted by the actions of others, the systems, certain threats that come in, things that happen to me. Of course I'm impacted by these things. But the mentality of the victim is to give up, is to focus on the perpetrator more than oneself and focus on punishing them or making them know what they did wrong or, you know, making sure, you know, so much energy goes at the perpetrator when the one who's needing all of that attention and love and care is right here.
right here. This is the one who needs your, your energy. Most of the energy people put into their attention on the perpetrator is energy that is wasted. And it's not bad, it's not wrong. It's a, a phase of the process, it's a developmental say, stage. It's a, it's a wave in the ocean of our process. But many people get stuck there and don't have another place to go. But when we peel back the curtain, see behind this pattern. We see our utter vulnerability. We see our grace. We see ourselves winking at us. It's so much easier to find an enemy out there somewhere to blame especially if they're far away and you can't do anything about it because it relieves you of the responsibility of doing something about it. When the most intimate sort of charnel grounds, the most intimate garden you have to tend to when it comes to any of these larger scale, you know, collective fractal phenomena is the garden of your own soul and the garden of your most intimate relationships. I should be speaking in my, but that's not what's coming through right now. So we are turning our exquisite attention toward our most intimate relationships with this body, learning how to embody, learning how to feel, learning how to honor the intelligence of our different systems, our emotional system, our endocrine system, our heart, our solar plexus, our sacral plexus, learning how to listen and include the body in the council. So it's not just the mind running the show, which is easily programmed. The mind is so easily programmed, that's why it's been set to run the show. But we're deprogramming ourselves when we come back down into our bodies, when we learn how to use this magnificent miracle of an instrument the way it was intended, which I still have no idea what it was intended for. I've caught some glimpses. Oh my God. It's amazing. Most notably, it's intended for generating ecstasy and love, for generating a sense of hope and possibility, for creating trust. That's what this body is for, for playing in the world, for exploring and investigating, for feeling and being nourished and connected to life through a sense of feeling, through sensation, through emotion. This body, this hardware comes with a lot of genetic momentum, a lot of ancestral karma and trauma. But good thing we souls knew exactly what we were doing when we chose to incarnate here. I mean, we didn't know what was going to happen, but we knew what we were getting into when we incarnated into these broken family systems and these these structures and systems that are so toxic. Taking on the karma of the collective, experiencing directly in our own being the fruits of these programs, these corrupt programs, so that we can absorb them and dissolve them in our breath, in our bodies. So we can feel it and make room to feel it, feel the pain of our ancestors, feel all that we're terrified to feel with all of the senses we have yet to know we can feel with, and to love it into dissolution and compost it into the soil of our new world. don't believe that we are going to fight the systems and change them from the outside. I believe that we are going to shift the patterns on the inside and begin living in such a way to make the systems that are out there that we've created and are falling apart simply obsolete. And that starts in our most intimate realm of life. 
this is the essence. I feel like there's this elusive point, this thing that I wanted to make really clear, but I've probably already spoken too long. But I'm gonna move for a little while and make some sounds and open and intensify and see if there's anything. The physical manifestation of the he's corrupted programs is a uh, passive tension in the body, passive tension that we carry in our posture, in our musculature, in our fascia. It's tension. It's a holding. So a great deal of my self-care and inner practice has been devoted to these to shaking and sounding and experimenting into a softer and softer musculature and nervous system hanging more effortlessly on solid structure of bone, crystalline structure. Allowing both the forces of gravity and the forces of levity to work on my systems and on my bodies. So I, oh, it was only until recently that I thought I was pretty relaxed. Seems to be there's an endless horizon here. And what lies beyond the, the sight is very exciting. <laughs> miracles. Miracles. We're here to give birth to miracles. Our body is a conduit of miracles. Our body is a space holder and an intelligent, evolving expression of light intelligence. We are literally made of sunlight. Now she is helping the divine masculine to understand and adjust. She is here to collaborate. She is here to bring harmony and peace again. She is here to awaken our capacity to farm this world into a paradise where everyone has everything they need. And nobody has much more than that. Because why would you? True prosperity is not about things. Of course, shelter, clean water, healthy food, breath. These are essential to prosperity in this realm. <laughs> oh. But all of the things that we've been trained to pursue Beyond that, instead of pursuing the beauty of our relationships, instead of cultivating love and intimacy with others, deep trust, connectedness, collaboration, right? This is our training. And this is what is being undone as we become more of what is emerging from inside of us, which is a new species. I 
encourage anyone who's listening to experiment ever more courageously in the realm of embodiment. Because it's uncomfortable to do with your body what you have not been trained to do with your body and what you have been shamed for doing with your body in the past. You may have been burned in a past lifetime for using your body in a magical way. So there is understandable fear, which is only here for our transmutation. But it must be held. It must be cradled and embraced, not pushed away, not bypassed, brought in to the heart. (sighs) Because that's what magic knows to do. who are really committed to seeing the world as divided between perpetrators and victims, I want to invite you into a contemplation of how you are replicating that pattern by doing so, and invite you to recognize the power of your stories to create reality, and invite you into a contemplation of what a world would be like that doesn't actually have victims and perpetrators. It just has humans playing these roles for each other, working out karma that needs to be worked out, expunging things from the genome that need to go now. People playing out fantasies, existential kinks from non-incorporeal beings. And that it's all rooted in ignorance and a partial perspective. So how do we truly end the cycle? By ceasing to identify with our sense of victimhood and recognize it as a a trauma that we're here to steward, here to heal, here to bring home and release into the soil of the new heaven and the new earth. This is the see myself walking in this life and I still have plenty of messes to take care of in my most intimate spheres and I see a very natural progression of this process starting to expand like a deep breath in into my community here at Sundari our Sangha as well as our larger community around Sundari, Puna, Kaimu, Kalapana, starting to ripple. We're reconciling the opposites. Reconciling the opposites. Reconciling the opposites. Reconciling all parties who feel other. Bringing us all home. But it starts here will grow so effortlessly out from the inside when it ripens, when it's ready, when the seed is germinated and it's gotten all the conditions that it needs inside this alchemical container. The seeds of this new world will grow of themselves. No force, no trying, just effortless riding the current of life force as it sweeps through the world and heals and enriches and cleanses and purifies and uplifts and clarifies and brings the grace of justice, true justice, the grace of true justice into the world, not as a ideal, but as a lived frequency, as a cellular recognition of what is just and not just. utterly non-reactive response system to injustice. (sighs) Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for sticking around. I hope this has been valuable for you. If this brings up any questions or challenges, feel free to like post them in the comments. And may your day be open. 
heart overflow with love for life. May your body drip with ecstasy and vitality. May every relationship you're in nourish your heart deeply, touch you at the level of your soul, and be a space for you to give your most intimate gifts. Oh, may your dharma, may your kuleana, may your purpose in this life be served. May you bring the magic that only you can bring to your life and create from the very center of your experience as the king or the queen that you are. Mahalo nui loa. Aloha kiakua. Thank you, Aina. Thank you, great spirit. Thank you, life. Thank you, my friend.